This was it. But these were, those were the days. These, really. these uh, probably five, six blocks right here. Yeah, this, this is where it was. 7th Broadway. Yeah. All on Broadway and 7th Avenue. Uh, and, uh, all the publishers, uh, Chapel Music, all the songwriters, everybody was concentrated in this area. Where the song was born. Oh, Danny Scooby-Doo, I'm in love with you, Danny Scooby-Doo. I'm in love with you, Danny Scooby-Doo. I'm in love with you. Two grown men singing about Denise. See that? That was still Vin got a full set up. That was Surprise. Vinny's. That was Vinny's ex-girlfriend. <laughs> Denise, Denise, oh, when you're. The name Randy the Rainbows was formed when we had Denise. That was it, made Denise, and uh, they said, your new name is Randy and the Rainbows. It was like, <laughs> we, hate, we didn't like the name, but then you had a hit record, who cared what they called you, you know? <laughs> You're 16 years old with a hit record. office is now of uh, David Letterman, the David Letterman show. But up until the mid-90s, we were recording a hit. The old building, you know, part of Tim Pen Alley, really goes back to the, you know, the, the, the songwriters that came here from Europe, the Gershwins and the, and the Cole Porters and the Irving Berlins and Don Kirshner and, and uh, Sadaka and all the songwriters that went up there to write. It was a music building. It was a total music building. It was a music it, building, you know. Uh, it was an iconic place to be. But that building was very important for a lot of songwriters. A lot of hits came out of that yeah. building. Let's go in. I'd like you to see the interior of the building. This is where we came if we were looking for material, you know, or, or for me myself when I was trying to get signed when I first started out. I hit almost every office here to try to get somebody to take some interest in the group, you know? But it's, a, it's really a sort of depressing to see this building uh, turn Very into quiet. nothing. Big it's it's kind of sad because uh, this was the Mecca. <laughs> After 64 and 65, when the, you know, the British invasion happened, it was very tough to get our records on the air. He had put us, well, it was a combination of uh, President Kennedy getting assassinated, and then right after that, like the Beatles six were months, the Beatles were here, and it like really killed it completely for us. You know, I'll, I'll never forget, Neil Levinson called me. Neil wrote Denise. Hello, Vinny. I got to tell you something. I said, what is it? <laughs> hey? He said, uh, <laughs> a punk rock group did Denise. And he plays it, and he gets on the phone, he goes, they ruined my song. <laughs> <laughs> so about a year later, I said to him, hey, Neil. Did they ruin your, still ruin your song? <laughs> he and he to smiled make all his money. while he had the platinum records on the wall. <laughs> yeah, we got a call. I mean, <laughs> agent called us and said, uh, you're going to be playing a punk room. Yeah, really? Yeah, they want an authentic 60s act, and they want you guys. And that was the Mud Club, uh, which was very, yeah, look, very well known in, in those days. A lot of the, a lot of the uh, glitterati of the, the punk set hung out in that club. And uh, in between shows, we see a, I look out the window, I see a silver stretch limo pull up. Um, the club owner came over to us and said, uh, Deborah Harry and, and Chris Stein from Blondie want to come down and That's see you crazy. guys tonight. And uh, oh, all the guys said, you know, we got to get your autograph. She said, no, I'm not giving you my autograph. What are you talking about? She says, I'm getting your autograph. <laughs> we said, get out of here. She says, 
No. You are not getting I am getting your, and I'm not leaving here until I get it. And we, I, I was kind of stunned, you know, we were stunned.